If you've got questions for either of these gentlemen, be writing them down, be passing them forward. We'll do questions for about 10 minutes, then we'll recess to uh, 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 refreshments. Uh, I will also tell you that there is an interesting uh, uh, bit of evidence being developed that will soon be published by Professor Kromakov down here. It may have some relevance on this issue with some uh, findings that he discussed with us today and yesterday. Uh, including some uh, ancient inscriptions. So you may enjoy visiting with him. We may have to have him and, and Jim and crew back in uh, a year or so after your book comes out and hear, hear some more. Do you think it is necessary to look to process theories to explain the plagues, the crossing, etc.? It's uh, difficult for me to evaluate these, these various claims. I think that some of them are fascinating, interesting. Um, clearly, they are a combination of geological, meteorological, and ecological catastrophes. Sometimes they do happen simultaneously. So I think they're interesting, but I think ultimately they don't always fit all of the biblical data. And sometimes a miracle is a miracle. So it, it just may be that um, we can't explain some of the things that happened. Is a 20-mile average for a day's journey applicable to any size group, small, large, or enormous? Yes, the question, the, the question is, and, and by the way, you'll notice uh, the idea of a day's journey, it's like a marathon. I heard a, a, a friend speak a rather humorous talk about how he ran the marathon, and he was so enthusiastic, he was running, and... and and he had this horrible thought as he crossed, crossed the 10-mile line and saw the time, and he said, the Kenyans just finished. <laughs> because he knew that he still had another 14 miles to go or whatever it was. But a marathon is 26 miles. It doesn't tell you how long it takes you to get there. And a day's journey is a certain distance. You may have to go a little bit longer to get there, but that's how they measure distance. Or you could say a mile. Um, I can't walk as fast as I used to, but a mile is still a mile. So that's the, the factor, not, not how long. There is a side note to this question that I think, uh, Jim, might be, might be interesting for people to hear your perspective on this. The gentleman or lady says, I ask this in light of the millions who left Egypt in the Exodus. Oh, boy. I think you might enjoy uh, explaining a little bit. my green book. Yeah. Um, yes, well, that's, this is a question we often get, um, and that's why it's addressed in my, my, my green book. Um, do you have my green book and the yellow book over there? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So there you have both the green book and the yellow book. The green book deals with this uh, because it is an important thing. Uh, in Exodus 12, where it talks about 600,000 men, uh, the Hebrew, Sheesh Ma'ot Aleph, 600,000 men, the question is not, is there 600,000 men, but what is 600? Elif mean? And the word Elif has, can have three or maybe even four uh, plausible Hebrew translations. The problem is our, our English Bibles translate this as 600,000, but it could be just as easily rendered 600 clans. Uh, Jesse, the father of David, refers to, uh, tells David, okay, when you go, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is Gideon, I'm sorry, Gideon refers to his Eliph is the weakest in Israel. My clan is the weakest in Israel. It's a subdivision of a tribe. Uh, David uh, goes to visit the commander of his brother's Eliph in Hebrew, unit. It's a military unit. Um, and so there are different ways of translating Eliph. The problem is all the English versions that you read translate as 600,000 men, and therefore, by the way, making it larger than the U.S. Army, uh, the Egyptian army, the Israeli army leaving Egypt, the Egyptian army at that time, from the 18th dynasty down to the Ramesside period, would have been between 25 and 30,000. So if Israel had 600,000 men, they didn't need Moses, they didn't need God, they could leave any time they wanted to leave. <laughs> okay. Um, isn't it distrust in God's mighty power if we try to explain the miraculous work of God with possible natural phenomena? Steve answered it one way a minute ago. Let me answer it a different way. And I would say that the problem with that question is that it presupposes 
a non-biblical worldview. A biblical worldview, there is no d distinction between natural and supernatural. And this is the problem. If you believe that God is the creator who controls and sustains, then all phenomena in nature are not natural. They're a part of God's created order. And so I think it's a mistake to try to say this is natural, this is supernatural. When the sun rises in the morning, uh, often I'm standing washing dishes in the kitchen, and I say, praise God, you've done it again. I don't see it as just a phenomenon of astronomy. And so I think the problem with that question is it reflects uh, the worldview that creates this dichotomy between uh, natural and supernatural. So I don't think it's wrong to look for natural. What I think is wrong is when the natural becomes the, the way to explain everything, as if somehow, if we explain it naturally, that leaves God out. And, and for my theistic worldview, I would say God is intimately connected with everything that goes on. Okay. I have heard about the Ipuwer papyrus that has an account like the biblical plagues. What can you tell me about it? Uh, it's a stretch to say the papyrus Ipuwer. Um, uh, I do discuss it and quote from it in my yellow book, so feel free to buy that. <laughs> but papyrus Ipuwer does refer to the calamities that happened in Egypt during the period when Egypt did not have a ruling king that controlled the land. And when the king is in, in control, of course, everything is in order. When the, 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 the king is not in control, the land falls apart, the Nile doesn't flow properly, the sun doesn't shine, etc., etc. Uh, we have these in a number of different texts. So Papyrus where some people point to as reflecting the, uh, the plagues. These sort of things are described in, in numerous other uh, literature of this particular genre. So Ipuwer is not alone in that. The complaints of Chacheb or Reisenab, Prophecy of Nefertiti, all of which are in the yellow book. Okay, so the last question I'm going to read, there are a ton of people in here that I would love to hear their learned responses to this, but I'm throwing it out there for you too, though this is not really fair for geology. Mm -hmm. Considering Asiatic population in Egypt, West Semitic names of Hebrews in the Exodus, and Egyptian names, we might add. Moses, who grew up in Egyptian context. What do you think was the original language Moses used to have conversations with his people and with God? What was the original language of the law? Whatever Moses is recorded to have written. Canaanite, Egyptian, Amorite? Yes. I want dessert, man. <laughs> well, I would say the uh, answer to that is so simple, you could ask your Dr. Kromelkoff and he could answer that. Um, well, all we have, all we have is, is the, are the biblical records written in Hebrew. Um, and, and scholars debate, you know, the exact part of the linguistic branch, and we increasingly realize that in Canaan, we, we think of Canaan as a homogeneous unit, but we, we now, I think, are beginning to see that there are dialects and different things going on. There were dialects within Egypt in ancient times, as there are even within e uh, Egypt uh, present time. So uh, I, I would simply go with the simple answer that, that the Bible is recorded in Hebrew, uh, most of it except for small portions in Aramaic, its first cousin. And so I think we're, the question more is, the, the script seems to evolve as does the language over time. There's what we call late biblical Hebrew. Uh, Dr. Gary Rensberg has done some work on, on those sorts of things. And wave your hand, Gary, people want to talk about um, historical Hebrew grammar and so on. We got a number of experts here, but uh, I would defer to that to them. But my simple answer is, is Hebrew, and the origin of that as a language is a whole other question. I'll leave that to those. All experts. right. Recognizing that you two need to get over and get some food, get prepared to sign and to talk, I would suggest you make your exodus through... <laughs> <laughs> Someone will part those doors. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.